Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here. Got another Master Duel video for you. We are coming back to Twin Sprite. Uh, another Sprite deck because we are celebrating Jet coming back to two. The first, hopefully, the first of Sprite. Uh, a few, at least a couple, of Sprite unhits to come uh, at some point in the future here. So Twin Sprite, yeah. Uh, I am a huge fan of this deck, of course it is a Sprite deck, but I do think that this is the best Sprite deck in the current meta. Um, because the main reason being uh, this is the one that has the most amount of one card plays. Indeed, opening either of like, the Live Twins, Leela or Kisakiel here, uh, is going to be a full combo by itself. And not only can you open just one of these twins, we also have Sunny Snitch and the Secret Password for Sunny Snitch to help us search those. Um, so in that regard, I think that, again, this is just ultimately the most consistent spray deck, and by extension, then the best one. Um, because, I've said it before, uh, the sprite archetype is one entirely of extenders, right? Every single one of these cards is an extender except for, well, their starter, which is called starter. <laughs> so, um, oftentimes you are really relying on having another level 2. However, if you open Kisakiel or Leela, you can normal them and then you'll automatically get another level 2. Uh, you can go into Gigantic straight from there and then Gigantic for blue, but on top of that, you can then later in the line, go into Elf, and then bring back your Kisakiel, then you, with Kisakiel and another monster, go into the Evil Twin, and still do your twin plays after doing sprite stuff. Uh, you do need to mind uh, your locks, though, uh, because if you summon a monster off of either of the Evil Twin leaks, then you will end up locking yourself into only summoning fiends from the extra deck, for the rest of the turn. So if you haven't gone into like Gigantic or Elf or IP yet, then you won't be able to summon those cards, which is something to be mindful of um, for sure. Whoops, I didn't mean to take that out, silly me. Um, but yeah, so this extra deck here uh, in particular is built with this kind of like combo line in mind, or these restrictions rather. Um, for the Fiend side of it, uh, we have a couple of Fiend monsters we can go into with IP. Uh, well, mainly the Underworld Goddess. Uh, sometimes I play the Nightmare Unicorn in, in, as well, um, but I still opted to play SP Little Knight instead. Even though this is one of those decks where I could very easily see Nightmare Unicorn being played because, again, of the potential to Fiend lock, Really what it comes down to is you, you just IP before you activate Evil Twin Kisakiel or Leela uh, during your opponent's turn and just go into SP and then Fiend you lock yourself later. Um, you could cut Nightmare Griffin for Nightmare Unicorn if you wanted more options with IP, but Nightmare Griffin does allow for a nice turn one setup that you can occasionally get uh, where you can basically floodgate your opponent out with the last effect here that says special summoned monsters on the field cannot activate their effects unless they are leaked. So, that's another way that you can uh, sometimes play out your games. I find it pretty rare that you actually summon the Nightmare Griffin, though. Um, because a lot of the time on turn one, you're going to two lock yourself with either the Gigantic or the Starter pretty early on into your turn. So, Nightmare Griffin is like... Um, it is another target that you could potentially go into with IP, of course, but I, I just find myself not using it a lot of the time. So, uh, if you're wondering, like, hey, do I have to have Griffin in order to play this deck? It's not a requirement. No, you could definitely play Nightmare Unicorn or honestly any number of, like, Link or Rank 2s instead um, to kind of help support with that. Almirage might look a little bit weird uh, in a list like this. However, uh, it is actually decently important because of the EMP Meow Mine. Uh, because if you, let's say you open a Hand Trap plus Meow Mine, right? Uh, then you can normal summon the Hand Trap, link it off into Almirage. Now there's a Link monster on the field, so you can special summon Meow Mine. Uh, and then you can link off the Almirage and the Meow Mine for the Sprite Elf. Elf can then bring back the Meow Mine, and then you can potentially overlay them for a Gigantic, and then Gigantic for Blue, Blue for Jet, Jet for Starter, and then boom, you're off to the races, you have plays. Uh, definitely more plays than if you did not have Almirage in the extra deck. So, uh, is that worth the extra deck slot? I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I mostly put it in here just to test it out. I don't think I had a situation where I did some of the Almirage, but I know playing this deck in the past, I've not played Almirage and had that situation come up, so... Um, I guess it really comes down to, like, you know, for, because I consider the Almirage slot here to be, uh, one of the flex spots of the extra deck, probably Nightmare Griffin I consider to be the other one, 
Um, so it really comes down to, you know, is there another extra deck monster I'd want to play that would come up more often than Almirage? Possibly. Uh, we'll see moving forward uh, if there ends up being anything else I want to play instead. Uh, if you ever wondered why these decks play two Kisakiel but only one Leela, by the way, uh, it's because you actually do need two Kisakiel as part of your turn one combo line. Uh, because if you finish with the twins, right, uh, then you'll uh, end by going Leela to bring back the Kisakiel and then draw a card off of this effect, right? Uh, but you can't go into Trouble Sunny because, again, you'll be two locked either by Gigantic and or Starter. So uh, from there, you still need to link off the Kisakiel and Leela into another Kisakiel. Uh, you might be wondering why that's the case. Uh, that is so that you can bring back the Leela during your opponent's turn and then get the destroy effect. So if you ever wondered why Twin Sprite plays to more, or typically, if not two, just more Kisakiels than Leela's, that is the reason why. I think overall the build is relatively standard, uh, much like other builds that I've played recently. I opted for a couple of triple attacks instead of maxing out on Valor and or Imperm, but with Crossout Designator I still wanted to split the difference at least a little bit between Valor and Imperm. Uh, again, if you don't like triple attack or if you don't own it, you could just jam more, uh, you know, Valors slash Imperms, but I've said it before, I'll say it again, if you're playing best of one, I think this card is an absolute banger. Uh, it's just a really good card in general, in best of three as well, uh, but especially in best of one, this is just the best board breaker. I'm just going to say it. Like, I'm not even going to throw the caveat of, in my opinion, in front of it. This is the best board breaker, generally speaking, for best of one. Uh, it's so flexible uh, and has going first options, which makes it the best for best of one. So um, I like to find a spot for it in just about every single deck that I play. And that is definitely going to include this one, which does have more room than a lot of other decks have for hand traps. Uh, if you do want to play more hand traps, you could very easily go down on Meow Minds. You don't even have to play Meow Mind, it is pretty optional. Uh, and or copies of Carrot slash Red. Um, I like having multiples of all of these just to have more extender options. But again, if you find yourself having enough gas and you want more hand traps, then... Um, then yeah, you should definitely cut. Those would be where I would start. Oh, also, um, in the past, I've typically only played Kiskeel Frost, but now I've also included Leela Treat in the main deck because there have been enough situations where I wish I had a Leela Treat to be able to search out for when my Kiskeel gets negated, but I still have Sunny Stitch and or Password in the hand. Uh, I also, I know I've explained this a couple of times, but if you've ever wondered why I'm on one Secret Password and three Sunny Stitch and not just three Sunny Stitch, uh, it plays a little better into Ash Blossom, right? If you open both of these, then instead of just having like a dead Sunny Stitch, you can potentially activate Secret Password and bait in Ash Blossom. I have actually done that before, um, which makes it, again, very, very, very slightly better than the third Sunny Stitch. But again, if you're running low on UR craft materials, you can just not play this card at all and just play three of the Sunny Stitch. That is perfectly fine. All right, I think that is going to go ahead and do it for the deck list, uh, the profile rather. Uh, let's break the list down card by card and then we'll look at some duels. We're on one effect failure, three Max C, three Live Twin Kissakiel, three Live Twin Leela, one Live Twin Leela Treat, one Live Twin Kissakiel Frost, two Sprite Blue, two Sprite Jet, two Sprite Red, two Sprite Carrot, two E and P Beow Mine, three Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, one Nibiru the Primal Being, Two Troll Tactics Talent, one Secret Password, two Live Twin Sunny's Snitch, two Called by the Grave, one Cross that doesn't need her, two Sprite Starter, one Sprite Gamma Burst, one Sprite Smashers, and then two Infinite Permanents. And that is going to be our main deck. For the extra, we're on two Gigantic Sprite, one Downward Magician, one Divine Arsenal Awe, Zeus, Sky Thunder, one Salmon Great Almirage, one IP Mascarena, two Evil Twin Kissakiel, one Evil Twin Leela, Two Sprite Elf, one SP Little Knight, one Nightmare Griffin, one Evil Twins Trouble Sunny, and then one Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. There is our list. Let's see those duels. Okay, this should be the last round of duels from the WCS qualifiers. So hopefully this will be the last time this season of me being like, I don't know what my opponent's on until, you know, a little bit into the game, but. All right, we're going first with a very good turn one hand here. Uh, gonna lead with the Live Twin Leela, summoning the Kisakiel Frost, overlaying those two into the Gigantic Sprite. Again, it might seem a little weird to go Twins into Gigantic, but again, because of the way that the Twin stuff locks you out, then you need to do it this way. 
So here I'm going to use Gigantic to grab the EMP Meow Mine directly from the deck. I'm only doing that because I already opened Sprite Blue. If I didn't open Sprite Blue, then I would of course search Sprite Blue. But um, the EMP Meow Mine does offer another form of disruption during the opponent's turn in the form of a bounce. So I decided to just kind of hold it for, or search it to uh, hold in the graveyard for that. Making the IP Mascarena. Starter for Carrot, gonna link off Carrot with the Kizikiel Frost we brought back up from Elf. That will let us go into Evil Twin. Kizikiel. Bring back the Leela, link off for the Evil Twin Leela. That brings back the Kizikiel, which lets us draw. Good draw there. And now, as mentioned before in the profile, uh, because we are two locks, we link off into a another Kiss-A-Keel. That way we can bring back Leela and use the Destroyer card effect on the opponent's turn. Yeah, I'm really liking the position we're in here. So, alright. Opponent's going to lead with the Cashier of Fenrir, right? Um, I'm going to chain Maxi in response to that. That might seem like a weird time to activate Maxi, but the reason I did it here in particular is so that way I would proc the Fenrir effect. That way I could... Uh, impermit and then negate not only the banish effect but also the search effect. Now it is a little bit awkward here if they end up going threatening to go to battle phase uh, because then I think I just have to I think I just have to use the kiss kill effect for Leela and pop the Fenrir. Not ideal. Uh, that'll fiend lock me but then I could potentially use IP to go into the underworld goddess uh, and potentially still out there, board there. But if you're wondering why I'm pausing and talking about this as if it were hypothetical and not just showing this, uh, it's because after I imperm the Fenrir, uh, I'm pretty sure they just concede right after that. Oh, no, no, that's right. They threatened to go to battle. We went Elf for Jet, Jet for a starter, and then they conceded, yeah. Although, you know what? Actually, because we had the Elf Revive, I forgot about that. We don't have to Fiend Lock ourselves right away. We could um, IP plus Jet into SP. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I was going to do. Yeah, yeah. IP plus Jet into SP, banish the Fenrir. Then we still have the SP other effect for Disruption. And then we still have uh, Leela bringing back, or Kiss Kill bringing back Leela for the pop as well. But as you can see, they conceded kind of early here. Um, but I wanted to show this game first because this is a pretty typical turn one combo line for the uh, Live Twin Sprite deck. The other games we're going to see are going to be, well, two of the other games we're going to see are going to be a little more atypical slash back and forth. The last duel is not very back and forth at all. You, you'll, you'll see when we get there. I'll, I'll save my rambling for them. <laughs> for them. <laughs> so uh, let's move on to the next one. All right, next game we've got lined up here. I know what one of these two... Well, I know what two of these three, I guess I should say, remaining the games are. Let's see if this is the one that I remember. We're going second and not opening any hand traps. I think this is the game I'm thinking of against Kashira. Yeah, Rota for Rise Heart. Yep, so I think this is going to be Cash. Look at a Rota for the Rise Heart and then Desires... Or two. I did find, I will say, I did find Desires in pure Kashira to be a little bit weird, in my opinion. Um, just because there's so many cards that have been hit on the list. Like, if I didn't open Fenrir, especially, then I would be very scared of banishing Fenrir face down. Uh, same to a slighter extent with Unicorns. Um, yeah, I think Desires is a bit of an odd choice. I think Extrav and Prost just end up being better for pure Kashira. I really don't think with the hits you can be banishing face down from your main deck. Alright, they're going to Rise Heart F and then Theosis. What did they hit from us? Uh, nothing important. Okay, so. Theosis for Unicorn. Unicorn for Birth. Birth F. Or no, Birth activating, but no F. I see. Then Overling for Era. Defissure set one and then pass. So the fact that they Theosis for Unicorn and not Fenrir does kind of tell me that they probably banished it face down. Um, I mean, I guess you could make the argument that like, oh, they can recycle the banished face downs, but that's only if they have a Rise Heart out, and even then they do that, nah, I guess not very slowly, but not not at a good enough pace, I don't think. So 
All right, they have Era and Cash Prep activating here. I don't think Cash Prep is actually summoning anything, though. No. And then Era is summoning Ogre, which is which I'm like, okay, they definitely banished Fenrir face down then, right? So they're going to lead with the Ash Blossom on my live twin Leela, which is actually completely fine because we have a million ways here that we can go into further plays. Uh, Ogre is going to ex banish from the top five. Um, this doesn't matter at all here. I actually don't think Castira Ogre is, generally speaking, a bad card, but here it just does not matter. So, I'm actually going to Troll Attack and take their last card, which is, funnily enough, a maxi they can't use because of Defissure. And I just want to make sure it wasn't going to be more disruption, because I know I can take care of the board here. What I'm going to do is Jet for Starter, Overlay for Gigantic, right? And then I'm going to move straight to Battle Phase. Gigantic's going to battle into Era, and you probably know where I'm going from here. Uh, then we can stack Downer, because we're not too lots, because we didn't actually activate Gigantic. And then good old Zeus on top of that. So that's another reason why I hand ripped with Triple Tack here, is to make sure that they do not have anything in hand uh, following this Zeus board wipe. So there goes the entire field. I can pass and on another wipe, and they're just going to concede because they're in top deck mode. Not only are they in top deck mode, but we already know they don't have access to Fenrir at all. Their other Unicorn could very easily be face down, and if that's the case, if they don't have any Fenrirs or Unicorns left in deck, um, then they're just done, right? Because even if they rip Ogre, which is, you know, not a bad card, um, the only trap card they could search is Prep, which they probably only play one of and have already used, and even if they did have another copy, it really would not do them any good here against Zeus that still had a board wipe left available. And on top of that, of course, as you can see from the hand, uh, we just had full plays ready to go for the next turn. So, good stuff. All right. Uh, although this is a graveyard-oriented deck, as you can see, it is not hard to do things under uh, a dimensional fissure type effect. So, uh, let's see our next duel. So that Cash Shira game was kind of one of the outliers that I remembered. I guess this one would be the outlier because I don't remember what deck we're up against here. But we shall see momentarily. We are going first. That's pretty good. Uh, looks like it's a 60 card deck. Nope, it's a 52 card deck. Excuse me. Uh, I'm going to lead by Normal Summon Sprite Red. They're going to chain Max C. I'm going to use blue here. Uh, but I'm mainly using this just to put another body for red, right? Uh, so I have a negate on the opponent's turn. Triple attack with the hand rip here, and I remember this one. <laughs> it's McConkos. McConkos with the trap card promise. Okay, prep. And then also Kaijus. Not only that though, they have they have an actual kaiju, they have lava golem, and they have raw sphere mode. So they can literally eat a board that's one, two, or three, or more bodies. They have one for literally every situation here. So uh, the choice is very obvious here. I'm going to use Preparation of Rights, um, because otherwise they have a useless trap card and, well, a relatively useless trap card, uh, and then just a bunch of uh, floodgates, or not floodgates, uh, kaijus in hand. So, yep, there goes the prep, and I'm just going to set the imperm and pass right back over to them. Alright, they're giving me Lava Golem because I have two monsters on the field, that makes sense. And not even setting the Trap Card Makanko Promise here, which is kind of interesting. Uh, Secret Password is not a bad draw, just getting another level 2 monster in general here to go with a Jet is not a bad draw. Um, but even if I didn't top deck any level 2 monster, I would still have plays here. I would simply normal summon the Jet, link it off with the Lava Golem to make Sprite Elf. Elf bring back Jet or... Uh, blue, and then just go into probably blue because I still have a jet left in deck, and I didn't use the I wouldn't have used the special effect there. So yeah, I would go normal summon jet, link it off with lava golem for sprite elf, elf bring back blue, blue for jet, and then would I be able to OTK from there if I jet for gamma burst? Yeah, because they don't have anything on field. Yeah, I totally would be able to. So then yeah, uh, jet for gamma burst, blue plus gigantic or blue plus elf into gigantic. Gigantic for red, probably just in case they have like a monster effect that I didn't know about in hand or whatever. Um, and then 3200 Gigantic plus red, plus we still would have the jet on the field, uh, plus Gamma Burst. Because, yeah, that's more than enough for lethal right there. So, yeah, that would probably be how I would do it from that point forward. But I think that is a game that just kind of highlights why Triple Tag is, is a card I like a lot. Um, because, again, it's a good board breaker for stealing a monster going second. Um, but also, just the hand rip, not even just the hand rip, but also the information you get on turn one is so valuable. Um, a turn one hand reveal off triple tech 
can very easily set you up to know how to play out the re literally the rest of the duel, right? Um, as was the case in this situation. Okay, um, we have one more game left to show, and I remember this one. I remember it all too well. So uh, get ready for a good rant here, because we're going into this last game. And why should I prepare myself for a rant, you might ask yourself. Well, uh, that's because we're playing against Exodia FTK. So this is a thought that I've, like, always had <laughs> and um i've expressed uh on social media lately can we just why did we never ban the head of exodia <laughs> like i know i know what the real answer is i know because nostalgia but like when it comes to non-game states when it comes to just non-games in general i can't think of a more notorious culprit than exodia uh, now, I know, I know that Exodia has support coming out in the OCG, which I guess, I guess, is a reason to not ban it now, but I guess my question can then further extend to, why was the head of Exodia not ever just banned, right? And I think the thing that's wild to me is how often people will go to bat for Exodia when they will so readily complain about literally any other strategy, right? Like, I've seen people complain that, oh, Infernoble Knight is too good. Their board is an effective FTK. Um, this actually, we had this discussion on stream, actually, when I was like, just ban the head of Exodia. And then people were banned, like, were like, uh, no, ban Isolde. And it's like, why ban Isolde? The FTK that Isolde enables is Exodia. And other than that, she's just out here supporting Infernoble Knight and Warrior Piles. And then that's when somebody chimed in and was like, ah, oh, well, you know, the Infernoble board is an effective FTK. And it's like, but it's not an actual FTK, which Exodia is! Like, I don't understand it. Again, I know it's nostalgia, but, like, this is why I have a hard time taking so many complaints about Yu-Gi-Oh! seriously. Because so many of them boil down to, I don't like this, so we should ban it. I like this, so it should stay. Exodia is cool and based because I saw it on the TV when I was six, so it should stay. But I sold... Alright, Isolde, the card that enables it. No, 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 let's ban that one. Huh? Huh? Are you stupid? <laughs> like, I don't I don't understand. I truly don't understand the mentality there. Except for nostalgia. This thing make brain go good, so I want it. Uh, I, which I don't think is a good argument. Uh, I just don't. <laughs> like, you can like a card for nostalgia. Like, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but... To advocate for not the card that directly has the FTK alt win con, but the one that sometimes enables it, not even in variants like this, to advocate for that to get banned? That's the biggest ha huh? of my life ever. Like, I, I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand. I, I, I don't get it. Um, again, I do get it, but I just don't understand how people cannot see past their own biases that are so obvious. Like, again, I've said it before. I hate Flanderies. I know that's going to sound completely tangential, but I'll, I'll connect it back here in a second. I hate Flanderies. I don't like playing against M-Pen. For that reason, I am glad it's at one. However, I am able to look past my own bias and think more objectively and be like, yeah, Flanderies is not a particularly strong deck and doesn't really deserve how harsh of a hit it's had, especially M-Pen. That card could be at three. Um, and I think, it, I honestly believe that the fact that Yu-Gi-Oh players are not capable of this, are simply not capable of this as a whole, is why discussion about competitive Yu-Gi-Oh sucks. <laughs> it's why banless discussion sucks. It's why should we errata this card discussion sucks. It's all awful. I don't know. I, maybe I'm just being too much of a pessimist, but... Um, this is also another reason why I'll advocate, why I will advocate for never surrendering. Um, I had a lot of people in, because I played this game on stream, I had a lot of people in chat saying, why don't you just surrender? They obviously have it, they obviously have it, they obviously have it, um, but they didn't. <laughs> they played out the combo until, because you might be wondering, like, why would they play out their combo that long and not just concede if they know they don't have it? Because they were waiting for me to concede. And even, funnily enough, this last, um, Dark Factory of Mass Production here, um, when they activated this, they lingered on it for, like, 30 seconds and then surrendered because they were waiting for me to surrender so uh i just wanted i i, I only say this game as an opportunity to get on my soapbox <laughs> and um yeah i mean you can totally feel free to disagree of course but um i just i i i, I can't i can't fathom like 
I, I can't fathom thinking that Isolde and Aurora need to get banned and then looking at the head of Exodia and being like, no, nah, that's fine. Huh? Again, I'll say, huh? <laughs> but, okay. Uh, that'll do it for this one. Let's just move on now to our outro. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video, that means a lot to me. Uh, it's also a great way to support the channel, so thank you very much for it in that way as well. Uh, if you're interested in supporting the channel in other ways, uh, like the very special patrons that I am thanking here, uh, you can do so by checking out some of the links in the description, one of those goes to the Patreon, uh, where you can join these fine folk and support the channel that way. I do post daily content over on Patreon, so uh, you do get something for support there and if you're interested I also have a coaching tier option uh, as well details again will be on patreon in the link below uh, also in the description linked below is my twitch page where I stream uh, a few times a week you can go ahead and check that out follow or subscribe over there uh, if you ever want to catch me live uh, you'll also find my second YouTube channel if you feel like subscribing over there to watch some of the twitch vods as well as some additional uh, non yu gi -Oh related content that I make over there. Uh, again, any of those links you want to check out is all a great way uh, of supporting. But again, even if you don't do that, just watching was also a fantastic way to support. And once again, I have to thank you so very much. But uh, in any case, this is Hexlex. I'm going to be signing out and I'm hoping you have a fantastic day.